Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Denise Rickster with Georgia State University, and I'm delighted that you have decided to join us today uh, during our admissions information session. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, please keep a note of any questions that you'd like to ask because I'm here for you and I want to share my presentation with you, but I also want to have the opportunity to answer any specific questions that you may have uh, that would be a benefit to the group. So now I will share my screen. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Harwell, I need you to add me back as a host, if you don't mind, so I can share for a moment. Okay, great. Georgia State University was founded in 1913. Uh, our first graduating class was really a night school and it only had about 75 students. So you see that we have come a long way in that amount of time. We've got 53,000 students currently, and that is as a result of the consolidation with Perimeter College in 2016. So at the Atlanta campus, there are about 30,000 students, <clears throat> excuse me, and about 23,000 at the Perimeter College campuses, and there are five campuses as well as online. According to the US News and World Report, we are the number one best public university for undergraduate teaching. What that means for you is that you are going to be trained by some of the best teachers uh, in the country. We have an 84% retention rate, which is one of the highest in the country. What that means for you is that of the freshman class that comes in, 84% of them return for their second year. So that lets you know that, you know, students are succeeding and they're doing well and they're returning because the ultimate goal is for you to get your degree. The other thing that I wanna point out to you is that we're one of the fastest uh, research institutions in the country. And most of the times when you think of research, you think about science, biology, and all of those things, those majors. <clears throat> but that's not true with us. You could uh, actually be conducting research or doing some research in arts or humanities or some other sort of major, not just your traditional science. In the college environment, you will have majors that are broken up into different colleges. The Andrew Young School of Policy Studies that was named after the first, I'm going to admit Dennis here, welcome. Um, that was named after one of the former mayors of Atlanta. He was also the first African-American ambassador to the United Nations. If you wanna get into government or political science or <clears throat> policy studies, you would be enrolling in the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. The School of Nursing, of course, is related to nursing, but you could also get into uh, health information, inf uh, um, health administration information. So it's not necessarily patient care, but you could be getting into the health field without necessarily being a nurse. The College of Education and Human Development, that's one of our largest schools. Um, if you are interested in education, early childhood, uh, sport administration is very popular. Uh, this is where you would enroll. The College of the Arts is for or more creative types. If you are into film, theater, and the arts, that's where you would enroll. 
the College of Law is a grad school. So ultimately, if we've got any future attorneys here, you can enroll there. Uh, J. Mac Robinson College of Business, of course, if you want to pursue a business career. And Perimeter College, I will get into later, as well as the Honors College, because there's some different requirements for honors in terms of the admissions requirements. In addition to taking care of your academic work, it's also important to have fun. And we encourage students to get involved. There are over 400 student organizations of which you can participate. And if there's something that does not suit your fancy, you can create an organization uh, with some of your friends under the guidance of student life. We've got over 31 Greek and fraternal organizations. ROTC is only available at the Atlanta campus. Unfortunately, it's not available at Perimeter. Um, and then you have international, civic, community engagement type opportunities, international, in which you can get involved. In terms of opportunities, <clears throat> we encourage students to try and get a uh, internship or study abroad opportunities because this is only going to help you in terms of being a more well-rounded individual. We have a department that's called uh, University Career Services. They assist students in preparing their resumes. They give you interview tips so that you can get perhaps an opportunity to work uh, in your field while you are in college. Over to your top left, you see a student who is in downtown Atlanta, who's on her way to a business in which she got a, a, an internship opportunity. On your far right, you see someone who got an internship at the Georgia Aquarium. And then in the bottom left, that's a young man who got a study abroad opportunity in the Middle East. Uh, study abroad, we've got over 72 study abroad programs. They can run in terms of maybe two weeks or to an entire semester. You do have to pay for that. However, you do have the opportunity to get uh, to apply for grants so that you can participate in those various programs. Center Park Stadium, it was formerly Georgia State Stadium. It was recently renamed. Uh, this is where all of the football games are held. Of course, you can see with these crowds there, that picture was taken before the pandemic, but it is also the location for commencement activities um, at uh, Center Park Stadium. Now let's talk about the admissions guidelines. This is the Atlanta campus admissions guidelines only. I know that a lot of you have heard about testing optional, and we do offer that for incoming freshmen. We got approval to have testing optional for the spring term, for the summer term, and the fall 20 term, 2021 term, which is if I've got any seniors out there, that is generally the term in which you will apply. So what this means is in terms of the GPA requirements, you see here that the average or the middle 50% have a high school core GPA between a 3.3 and a 3.86. Honors is slightly higher uh, and the average is 3.91. You do not have to submit test scores. We are recalculating your GPA. If you look at your HOPE GPA, that generally is going to give you an idea of where you would fall. If you have already taken an SAT or ACT and you do want to submit those scores, by all means, you may do so, but you are not required to do so. And you can get an admissions decision just based on your core GPA. Since we are doing testing optional, we are taking a closer look at the actual courses that you took. So you see, these are the high school curriculum requirements. This is part of the staying on track curriculum that's uh, provided by the Board of Education or the State Board of Education for Georgia schools. Generally, you should have four units of English, four units of math, four of natural science, three of social science, and foreign language, two units of the same foreign language. Since we are doing testing optional as well, we will be looking at um, IB courses, AP courses, honors courses, uh, dual enrollment courses um, in terms of calculating your GPA. So the, the 
more you have challenged yourself academically, the better your chances of getting accepted. The deadline has already opened for uh, the Atlanta campus. It opened on August 1. If you have not done so already, I please encourage you to do so as soon as possible. Uh, as you see here, December 8th is the Honors and Scholarship Priority Deadline. There is no uh, separate application um, required for that, and students would be uh, receive their decision by January 15th. April 1st is the final admissions deadline for the Atlanta campus, and June 1 is when your official transcripts should be submitted. And that's the final date for fall 2021. Now, in terms of the application for the Atlanta campus only, you are going to complete the Common App, and you're going to add Georgia State as one of your schools. There is a $60 non-refundable application fee. However, since this is, well, on a normal basis, we will take SAT or ACT or NACAC application fee waivers. But since this is during the time of Applied College Georgia, I will be sharing um, uh, an application fee waiver code with your counselors. So if you are serious about applying to the institution, you should definitely apply. And then uh, on the common application, as a matter of fact, it asks if you are applying for an application fee waiver. It also asks you a series of questions. You must ask, answer one of those questions when it asks about uh, application fee waiver. I might say about income, hardship, whatever, but it's not enough just to say I'm applying uh, using an application fee waiver, you need to state a reason, and then we will be able to apply the application fee waiver to your account, and you will not have to pay. You will also need to send in your official high school transcripts. You can do that through your Georgia Futures account, or you can mail it, or you can have your counselor send it to us. And then once you have applied, we will be sending you tons of emails. So it's important that you stay on track of those so that you can check your admission status so you will know where you stand in terms of getting in. Now we'll switch to Perimeter College campus. At Perimeter College, as I mentioned before, there are five campus locations. We've got Newton, Clarkston, Dunwoody, Alpharetta, uh, and Decatur. And then we have one of the largest online uh, enrollments in the state. So here you can start with your associate degree. You basically are gonna be taking your first two years at the Perimeter College campus, and then you'll transition over to the Atlanta campus or transfers elsewhere after your sophomore year. When you do transition, you are going to be classified as a junior. So basically you will have only two more years to go. But I wanted to point out to you that, you know, we might have some potential people who want to go uh, to school for two years and then you want to go to work, which is admirable. So those are our career programs. We've got dental hygiene, which is one. Once you get accepted into that program, because basically that is what we call a gated program. So basically you would apply into the college and then you apply into that particular major. The labs are at the Dunwoody campus. So starting out, you could take your courses anywhere, but once you got accepted into the dental hygiene program, you would have to go to the Dunwoody campus. Nursing, similar thing in the it's gated, but their labs are at the Clarkston campus. So that's where you would have to go. And radiologic technology, that is available basically at all locations. We do have a partnership uh, with, um, uh, Grady, um, as well as um, DeKalb Medical, which, which is now, I guess, Emory. So a lot of students end up uh, working at those places or doing their internships there. And ultimately they end up getting fired, I mean, getting hired, I'm saying getting fired, getting hired there uh, because they have performed well and they already have their foot in the door um, for working in one of those um, companies. We've got over 18 online associate degree programs. 
40% of the students are partially online or fully online. And this we had in place even before the pandemic. We already had 18 online associate degree pathways. Some of the more popular ones are education, foreign language, business, and criminal justice. So those are really kind of like the top four. Uh, in an online setting, generally you are going to be pretty much online all the time, which I guess with how you're doing now, you might not really want online. But the only reason why, if you are an online student, the only reason that you would need to come on campus in some instances is to take either your midterm, <coughs> excuse me, your midterm or final exams that would have to be done on campus. We are military friendly. If I've got any students out there who are military families, first of all, this is Veterans Day. Uh, I want to uh, thank you or thank your parents for their service, uh, and as well as thank you for the sacrifices that you might have made as a military family. Um, and we do have a large enrollment of military students. We have what's called a military outreach um, uh, department on each campus. And they specifically assist students in being able to finagle and use their benefits if they're eligible for benefits so that you can partner with perhaps financial aid and use your military benefits to fund your education. Opportunities are boundless here. We've got over 100 clubs and organizations, again, at the perimeter college campuses. Study abroad still exists there. Uh, wellness and fitness center, each, each campus has its own um, wellness and fitness center. Uh, at the bottom right, you see where some students are in what we call a cat lab. That is where part of a technology piece um, and basically they are just going in being creative on their own. It's not anything associated with a particular class and each campus has its own cat lab. And then at the top right, you see a performance of some students uh, at the Clarkston campus. Most of the large theaters uh, are at the Clarkston and or Dunwoody campuses. So if you're interested in the arts, those might be the two campuses that you might want to consider should you decide that you are majoring in theater or film uh, because the uh, labs and everything or rather the auditions and uh, the rehearsal centers, uh, they are at those particular locations. Application deadlines, it has already opened as well for the fall for perimeter. August 1 is the deadline, spring, December 1, May, is um, May 1st is the deadline for summer. Generally, just to point out to you that the fall and spring semesters are longer semesters. A full semester is 16 weeks. Summer semester is very, very fast. It's only five or six weeks. I know a lot of times you wanna say, well, I wanna try and get ahead of the game, but if you've never taken a college class before, you might find that starting in the summer might be a little bit overwhelming. So you're probably better off by waiting until the fall term. You will have a whole term to get yourself organized, figure out what you're doing. Then you'll have the spring semester when you re-enroll. And then in the summer, after you have completed a full year, you'll know what you're doing at that point and you would probably be more successful and you can just keep, keep the ball moving. But starting in the summer, a lot of times is a little bit problematic and we want you to be successful and we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. And oftentimes incoming freshmen who start in the summer have a tendency to not be able to really keep up because of the pace. In terms of the high school GPA requirements, uh, perimeter as well is testing optional. We are going to recalculate your GPA. If you have a 2.5 GPA or higher, you're placed at college level without testing. Between a 2.0 and a 2.49, you can still get in, but we recommend that you do submit some test scores because you're going to be at what we call co-rec level or learning support level. And if you need the help, fine, but sometimes, you know, your grades aren't really indicative of what you really can do. So you might want to consider uh, taking the AccuPlacer exam with us so that you can be placed in college uh, courses on one of those levels, either in English or math. And if your GPA is beneath a 2.0,
you must submit test scores in order to be admitted, either SAT or ACT or Accuplacer exam, which can be done with us, and the Accuplacer exam is $20. The application, one thing to point out to you, if you are interested in the perimeter college location, please do not, do not, do not, do not complete the Common App. You must go to the perimeter.gsu.edu website. That is where you can apply. There's a $20 application fee. You do see the campuses listed. You can always change your mind. If you wanna start one place, you can, you can take courses at multiple campuses, but we do want you to indicate where you want to start. As I mentioned earlier, in terms of the application fee waiver, um, I will share that because it does, uh, it's applicable to uh, perimeter college students as well. And we do need your transcripts as well. And you're gonna check your emails again, uh, once you have applied. Once you have applied, whether it's Atlanta or perimeter, you are going to be generated an ID number. Anytime you reach out to us, that's what we need to be able to pull up your file. So have that handy should you need assistance, because that will just assist us in assisting you. As I mentioned before, once you have completed, or rather if you do start at Perimeter College, you can transition, we call it transitioning, not transferring. You can transition to the Atlanta campus once you have 30 hours or more and a 2.0 college GPA. 30 hours is actually only going to be about a year. So keep that in mind. If you really want to get two years under your belt, it's going to be 60 hours, basically, because that's going to be two full years. But you do have the option of transitioning after you have 30 hours and a 2.0 GPA. So ideally, you could transition after your first year, maybe start at the fall of the following term, assuming that you start at fall of uh, next year. Financial aid to all of the seniors out there. If you have not done your FAFSA application yet, shame on you. You need to do that now. Do that now, please. We share the same code. You're going to go to fafsa.ed.gov. Uh, we share the same code, which is 001574. You're going to complete the application for the 2021-2022 school term. Uh, financial aid, you have to apply for every year. The first year is the one that's so usually a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more um, uh, frantic, if you will. But after that, you know, the, basically you're just going to be updating every year because your information generally will not change. You are going to need your parents' information as well in order to complete your FAFSA. So they're going to ask questions about uh, you, and then they're going to ask financial questions about your parents. So you need to do that so that your funding will be here prior to your enrolling in school. You do see that we accept the Hope Scholarship, Zell Miller, uh, is other various scholarships. On the last page of the presentation, I do have a schedule, or rather a listing of links, and you can go to the Scholarship Resource Center. There are over 100 uh, scholarships available for incoming freshmen, but you must apply. So you will be able to do that, research that, uh, and get the information in that is needed so that you can hopefully get some additional help on uh, funding your education. So that is the links that I shared with you that I was referencing actually. Uh, the Atlanta campus, you have the website there for admissions as well as perimeter. If you want to investigate what degrees and majors we offer, you see the link for that for Atlanta as well as Perimeter. There is the uh, financial aid website or the FAFSA website so that you can complete that online and submit that. Uh, Scholarship Resource Center, that is the link for that. Transcripts can be sent electronically only by your counselor, electronic transcript at gsu.edu 
or you can have them sent through Georgia Futures. Everybody should have a Georgia Futures account by now. You can have that sent. And then finally, you do have my contact information should you need additional assistance. So I will stop sharing my screen now and see if there are any other questions. I hope I have at least one. You can feel free to unmute yourself. I think I have that in there where you can unmute yourself. Open it in the chat if you're more comfortable. Thank you, Ms. Richter, so much. You do such a great job. And I actually have a question um, about when you were referring to transitioning from perimeter to the Atlanta campus. Um, so that timeline, so is that 30 completing hours, or can you apply to transition or whatever that's called before you're finished and maybe you're in that second semester? Well, basically, the student must have completed 30 hours first they will meet with academic advising prior to, basically you complete the transition application, but they do have to consult with academic advising because academic advising is going to make sure that they are on track and that they have taken the proper courses for their next move to the Atlanta campus. So that's something they began talking about even before then, maybe when they start school, if they know that that's what they want to do, will they come up with a plan at that point? Well, I mean, they can, they can have the conversation, but it's going to be a more meaningful conversation, you know, after the first or second semester. That makes sense. Um, all right, that's great. So much good information. I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, but you're very accessible, so you're fine with students reaching out to you, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, a show of hands, did anybody that's on here, uh, did you guys register online? Anybody? Because there were four or five that <clears throat> did respond to the email. Can you unmute yourself if someone did? Mm -hmm. Gabriel, Gab Gabrielle, is that right? Yes. You did? Okay, very good. Thank you. The others? No, you didn't get my email? We do have a couple of classrooms logged in. Well, I see one there. Yes, I have I'm, your email. Okay, okay. And, um... Well, I do have a question, though. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay, so, um, say for instance that you're already, like, a dual enrollment student at Georgia State. Were those hours transferred over to your freshman year? Yes, great question. Yes, uh, we will give you trans. Well, we will give you credit for the courses that you're already taking. But what you do need to do is you're going to apply as a freshman. Do not apply as a transfer student because we're going by the fact that you're still currently in high school. You're still going to have credits for those courses, but when you do um, change your application, make sure and do so as a freshman. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, yes, I have a question. Sure. I'm a junior this year, and I was wondering if you guys have made a um, decision on whether there's optional testing for the 2022-2023 school year. No, that's a great question, sweetheart. Uh, at this point, well, really, uh, at this point, we received approval uh, through the Board of Regents, and it's not just us, it's all of the university system of Georgia schools. We only received approval through fall 2021. So, you know, all of uh, 2021 is testing optional, but we have not received approval uh, beyond that time frame. It would be nice if that were to continue, but the Board of Regents will make that decision, quite frankly, for us. 
Um, and a lot of schools, quite frankly, in other states uh, like California, they have made the decision where they're just not doing it anymore. Uh, but that's not our decision to make. We have to go by what the uh, Board of Regents tells us what to do. But no at this point has been made. Uh, for if you're interested in dual enrollment though, uh, dual enrollment is one of the testing optional opportunities too for 2021. So the GPA requirement for both Atlanta and Perimeter is a 3.0 if you want to do dual enrollment courses next year. There's no application fee um, and you can get in testing optional. I will say to you as a dual enrollment student, since uh, it's definitely a 3.0, it is not a 2.99999. I'm sorry, I've had to tell more people. I'm sorry, no, we're not rounding up because we are holding dual enrollment students to a higher guideline, if you will, um, because you are trying to do two things at the same time. And we want to make sure that, you know, you're going to be successful and can juggle it. So you might want to consider looking at dual enrollment, perhaps. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, we do have a couple of teachers who are who are signed in. So, um, if any of your students, I think Mr. Jones and Watson, if any of your students have questions, you can put them in the chat box. Um, and I actually have another question. So, do you remember when Georgia Parker had the tag program? That's been a while years ago. Is there anything like that in place now that's similar to that? No, not really. Um, you know, we do have a partnership. Well, I'll say, you know, that pretty much went away when we consolidated with Georgia State. So um, now Georgia State does not have an engineering program. Um, so we do have the partnership with Georgia Tech. Uh, as well as Kennesaw State for engineering type, degree, type degrees uh, because students would have to start at perimeter and then go to another institution to get their engineering degree. But we, the tech program uh, no longer exists. <coughs> Excuse me. We want, we want them to stay at Georgia State. <laughs> well, I, I understand that. <laughs> Um, and we have recorded this, so um, I can make this available if anyone wants to look at it again, or I definitely am going to share with students who aren't able to join us. So thank you again, Ms. Rooster. You do such a great job. Okay, thank you. And I will email you the uh, application fee waiver codes. Wonderful. So those are for, you know, I guess for about a week, week and a half, since this is a part of the Apply to Georgia. Uh, like I said, um, if the student is doing perimeter, they definitely need the code. If they are doing common app, if they answer the questions and put down, you know, the reason apply to Georgia week or whatever, we should be able to catch them and uh, apply the code. So if there's any concern uh, about their FE waiver not being processed, please feel free to let me know because this is the first time we have um, waive at the waivers in mass since, you know, we consolidated. Uh, it doesn't apply to dual enrollment students because you don't have to pay an application fee waiver anyway. So you don't have to pay an application fee. So definitely, um, since that is being offered as an opportunity, we certainly want to take advantage of it. You know, two people who are really interested. I mean, don't, if you're not really interested in coming, you know, say that for your waiver for somebody else. But if you really are interested in our institution, by all means, uh, the application fee waiver is there for you. And uh, we look forward to uh, hosting you. Now, should students email you um, if, if they did not register, so therefore you wouldn't have their email? Yes. Um, I had a little form. Thank you for that. Let me see. Uh -oh. OK. 
Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. My students see that? I just made up a little quick and dirty contact card, if you will. So if you did not register, please fill that out. Or even if you don't want to uh, do the form per se, the information that I need basically is your name, email address, state your school, what you want to study. And if you're interested in Atlanta or perimeter and you have my email address there, and then I will add you to our registration list for today's uh, information. And this also helps too, in terms of tracking for uh, the application fee waivers. So please, I'm just, please, 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 please uh, email me that information. You only need to do that if you did not register in advance. If you registered and you got my email, don't worry about it. We already have your information and you basically already fill the form. You filled out a longer form as a matter of fact, but we already have your information in the database. Okay, great. So guys, just take the information that she wants and just put it in the body of an email and email it to Ms. Richter. Her email address is at the bottom. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Harwell. I forgot all about that. Thank you. All right, Mr. Perry, did you have anything you wanted to add? I think he was there. So, um, well, I think I think we're, we can wrap it up and thank you again. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I look forward to hearing from you and I'm just an email away if you, should you need me, okay? Right, thank you. All right, take care.